ACS Gas Training. My name's Alan Hart and today I've got one of the trainees from Viva Training Academy in Halifax and he's asked if he could come along and spend the day with me um, just doing, doing a bit of training. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to sort of drop him in deep end and I'm going to get him to strip this boiler down. I'm going to get him to take all the parts out of the boiler and I'm going to get him to tell you what all the parts are. And then I'm going to get him to put it all back together again. Um, so I hope you'll find this video of some use. Please, you know, please put some comments below. And yeah, let's uh, pass you over. This video is for gas safe registered and trainee gas engineers under supervision. Please comply with the current regulations at the time. Richard, we thought we'd send you a little video to show you what we've learned and what we've done today. Hi Richard, um, thank you for bringing me down here today. I really, uh, really learned a lot from um, Alan. Um, but today I've learned um, how to strip a boiler and uh, put it back together. Um, so basically, I'm going to talk you through what I've learned today. Um, so this is the pump. So start with top. What? So you're going to list components, start with top, top of boiler, okay. what have we got at the top? So basically we've got um, our main um, heat exchanger um, and with this pipe here for your, um, your, con uh, for your flow, uh, your, your condensation water drain, that, yeah, that drain into there. your condensation pipe. And what's this on the right hand side? And then you've got your um, expansion vessel Yeah. Um, and then down here we've got um, your pump yeah. um, with an um, automatic air vent. Auto air vent, yeah. And then um, from the, we've got a um, hydraulic pressure switch. Yeah, pressure switch. Yep, yeah. and um, a pressure relief valve. Yeah. Which when exceed three bar, yeah. um, it releases the pressure. Yeah. Um, and then we've got a hall sensor. Yeah. Which basically detects the fluid, uh, the, the water. Flow, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and then we've got our main gas valve yeah um with the uh, the injector hole yeah and then we've got um our diverter valve yeah with um a lead that's going to your um your front dial for yeah. your um your pressure and then you've got a temperature sensor um which basically detects the temperature. We've then, also learned how to test that as well, haven't we? Yeah, we so have. So we've yeah. done that with multimeter. Yeah, so we've learned how to test that. Yeah. And what readings we should get. Yeah, uh, yeah. So and, and what what do we do if we don't know what readings we should get? What have we learned? Um, what if we don't know the reading of the pressure switch? Do we can we the first thing you do is look in your um your manual uh, um instruction manual and sometimes it's not stated in the instructions manual so you just ring the uh, manufacturer um, and get um, you know um, understanding of exactly what um, values are set for this um, but then we've got your, um, you've so got the your important thing just to say there is we'd always read the installation instructions yeah. and if if we haven't got the information in the installation instructions yeah. we could always ring the manufacturers and the manufacturers will be there to help on mm. nearly all brands. Okay. Yeah. What else? What else have we got? And then we've got um, and then we've got your water plate, plate yeah, plate heat exchanger, plate heat exchanger yeah, um, which for your hot water yeah, um, and then in here we've got the diverter valve, which basically directs the flow of water, uh, either going to your uh, hot water tap. Or your central heating? Yeah, absolutely. Spot on. Yeah? How's that, Alan? Are you happy with that? I'm happy. So what that, what's that that you've just put in now? What's, what, what's this piece here? So this is the uh, burner. Yeah. Um, so that's the burner door, isn't the it? The burner, yeah. So yeah. Most, most important is your seal. Yeah. Around here, so to ensure that these bolts are equally tight. Yeah. So we don't have any spillage. Um, yeah, so we know that, so no leaks out of yeah. out of here, which we'd be checking this. Yeah. And then what have we got? What's going on down here? 
then um, this is where. So, so what, basically, what's this part? What's this called? So this is your fan. Yeah, that's the fan. Yeah. So this is your gas pipe. Um, very important to um, make sure you've got your washer and it's fully tightened. Yeah, yeah, tighten it up, spray it, test it, make sure that it's not leaking gas. Yep. So how have you found it? Stripping down your first boiler? Um, very interesting because um, any time I've looked at a boiler with the cover off, I've never actually known it and what components what is doing what. But today I've actually learned what each component is actually doing. Um, which is very important for a gas engineer. So just, just to recap, we're just going to recap on what this pipe is here. This this in the top, backs here really, really good. That they have um, It has like a gutter inside here. And if you had any water that came in the, the flue on the, um, on the air intake, it would go in this gutter here and it'd go down this pipe and that would then go into the condensate trap. And what we see on some boilers, on some boilers, you'll see sometimes they've got stains at the bottom of boiler, and that's because water leaks in inside boiler. So Ideal Vogue doesn't have this gutter in, in here. Um, so that's a really good feature of this boiler. So I thought I'd just recap on that really. But as you can see, he's done an amazing job today. Um, please add some comments below and um, yeah. So, as you can see, um, I put the boiler back together, um, all in one piece. Um, I'd like to thank Richard um, and Viva Training Academy uh, for giving me this opportunity to meet Alan Hart. Um, I wasn't expecting it, but um, I've learned a lot today, so thank you very much. So, thank you for that. It's been a, it's been a really, really, really nice day. And I actually enjoy um, I enjoy this you know it's nice to um, meet new people and and help them give them a bit of knowledge if you've got any questions please ask them in the comments below and if you are a trainee um, come over to our f uh, Facebook group I'll, I'll have um, I'll have a link to that in the comments below and if you can like and share and add comments on these videos it's really really helpful it helps this channel um, and, and that means that we can do more videos and we can help more people um, what I'm going to do now I just want to go over and recap some of the important things that we need to do and remember to do so this is for you for your trainees now and what I want to do the most important thing that you need to do when you go into a property is you need you personally need to make sure that you are safe and your customer are safe and how you would be safe is do all your checks do your electrical checks make sure that you're safe before you touch any boilers and make sure that customers are not going to trip over your toolbox or if you leave a wire out or all that they're not going to let get electric shock so as i say keep yourself safe keep your customers safe and then very important I always ask for the installation instructions and there's a few reasons for that one is in the back of the instructions it's got the benchmark so you'd fill that out when you do a service anyway but also the instructions it has the readings and it has all the things that you need to know about the boiler and it's really important that you that you read them and you, and you know what you're talking about with the boilers. And another thing that, that I wanted to point out is if there's something that's not in the instructions and as we've said in this video already, ring the manufacturers. The manufacturers are nearly always happy to help. What the manufacturers want is they want to avoid boiler breakdowns and they want to avoid having to send engineers out. So if you can ring them and you can do a good job to start with, then what that means is that the, the manufacturers are not sending people out unnecessarily. So 
a big percentage of boiler breakdowns is down to the installers and how they're installed and how they're serviced. Um, yeah, so so really, really important, really. Uh, I just wanted to go through Unknown the... <laughs> Sorry about that, schoolboy error with that. I should have turned my phone off. Um, yeah, I just wanted to go through a few of the things that you might need. And this is not an, inter you know, it's just a few of the things. So one is burner seal. So if you're going to be doing, if you're going to work on boilers, then you may need to change the burner seal. So that's the seal around the outside of the burner door. Now, different manufacturers require um, these changing at different intervals, but mainly you need to always make sure that they're in good condition. So if you take the burner out, make sure the seal is in good condition. And if that particular manufacturer says the seal needs to be changed, then you need to make sure that you change that seal when they say that it needs changing. So some manufacturers say that it needs to be changed once every five years. Some say just inspect it. And there's some that say that you need to change it every year. So you need to just be, you need to know about that and be careful. And you need to make sure that you change them if you need them. Uh, the other thing is the importance of using a gas engineer when you're working on a boiler. So if you're gonna do a repair on a boiler, um, sometimes I see that, I went to a job the day where somebody did DIY, I'd, I'd taken the boiler case off, and the actual boiler itself was the burner seal were leaking, and they'd removed the case. So if they'd have run the hot water, then that would have been le leaking carbon monoxide into the house. So it's really important that you use a gas safe registered engineer and somebody who's got all the tools. Now the regulations say you need to be a gas safe registered engineer or somebody who is competent to work on the boiler. Now the only way that you could be competent is if you've got all the testing equipment to be able to test it afterwards. So really you need to be gas safe and the only in my opinion, this is only my opinion now, the only exception to that would be if you've got, say, like a gas trainer and he's been, he trains gas engineers every day or um, somebody who, you know, really knows what they're talking about with gas and they've still got all the equipment but they may no longer be on the gas safe register because they no longer need to be. Now, I would say that they could be competent. Depends on the person. But that's somebody I would say that might be competent. But somebody DIY at home, in my opinion, almost definitely is not going to be competent. Only because, or one of the reasons, they're not going to have all the testing equipment to be able to do it. So, as I say, please do not DIY at all with gas. After you've finished working on the boiler, you will always need a flue gas analyzer. And, and there's lots of different makes and models. So there's Kane, there's Anton, there's Testo, all different brands, and they all do the same same sort of job. So I'm not I'm not sponsored by Kane. I'm not sponsored. This is just the analyzer that I've got and I've had a long time. Um, another thing you'll need you'll need a multimeter. You'll always need um, some sort of device as well to to test the boiler to make sure it's safe electrically so you're not going to get electric shock um, yeah I, I think I think I've covered more or less what I wanted to cover in this video but as I say if you do have any questions please ask them below and yeah and if there's all I can do to try and help anybody then just ask you know if you had comments I'll try my best I do get a lot of messages and I do get a lot of messages um, so I can't always respond to everybody but I do try my best to go down and, and answer as many as I can um, but if you're a trainee if you come over to the training group there's lots of other people in there and they'll be able to help as well um, yeah I'm babbling on a bit again now um, thanks very much for watching please as I say like share comment blah de, blah de, blah thank you